Hello, good afternoon and welcome. I hope that you are enjoying the event so far. It's great to have you here in the room with us. Big thank you to Resolution Foundation for hosting this event and for bringing us all together. I'm Candice McKenzie from the Institute for Government. I'll be chairing this session on communications and events. And I am delighted to be joined by Emily Fiddy, Communications Officer at Trust for London, Josh Tapper, Communications Officer at Demos, and Margaret Welsh, Communications Officer at New Economics Foundation. We will start this session by spending a few minutes letting you know what each of us do in our roles, and then we'll go into Q&A. If you wish to ask a question, you are very welcome to start submitting them straight away using the Q&A box. Or if you'd like to say your question, you can do so by using the raise your hand tool. For this option, once I call out your name, our technicians will unmute you and then you'll be able to speak to us. After the session, an FAQ sheet will be shared. So if we don't get to your question, hopefully it will be picked up in there. So as I mentioned, I work for the Institute for Government, a think tank that provides research, analysis, topical commentary and events to explore the key challenges facing government. I work in the events department as a producer. We produce two to three events per week, including virtual roundtables and public events. There are three of us in the team and we each have a special speciality. So my speciality is podcasts and special audio productions, which I do alongside our online broadcast events. So prior to joining the Institute, I organized events and did marketing for record labels. So I worked for Warner Music, Atlantic Records and Defective Records. And I'm also a DJ and radio presenter and producer. So communicating through audio is a big passion of mine. My role at the Institute for Government has a lot of varieties, no two days are ever the same. So alongside the production work, some of my other tasks include creating and sending invites and managing the event registrations, meeting with researchers to discuss their upcoming events, liaising with speakers, participating in an event and conducting event tests with them, creating the weekly events newsletter for our mailing list and producing month monthly analytics for on our podcast performance. And one of the things that I enjoy about working for the Institute for Government, and there are many things, but one of the main things, especially most recently, is the professional development support. So over the years, and I've been at the Institute for almost 10 years now, I have had many opportunities to continue learning and developing my skills through internal and external courses and training. And as job requirements and situations have changed, my role has been able to adjust and adapt. So I first joined the Institute as an events and comms assistant. And as our events output grew, especially our work with external clients, I then become an, became an events officer. And one of my key roles then was to manage our external client portfolio. Now with the pandemic lockdown and working from home, my role has transformed once again, and I'm now an events and podcast producer. So digital production has been a lifelong passion of mine from working as a DJ and also in radio. So to have the opportunity to incorporate my personal passion with my professional role and to take on new challenges and responsibilities has been an exciting, entertaining and very rewarding experience for me. So I'm going to leave it there for now and I look forward to your questions. And now I'm going to hand over to Emily. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, hi, I'm Emily. I'm the communications officer at Trust for London. Um, so if you haven't heard of us, the Trust for London is actually a charitable foundation. Um, so it's a little bit different to maybe some of the speakers that you've heard today um, from the wide think tank sector. Um, but the reason why um, I am speaking here is because we often um, fund think tank research. Um, so um, as a charity foundation, we give out about 300 grants a year, um, all looking to um, tackle poverty and inequality in London. Um, and we fund um, community groups and voluntary sector in London on the um, front line, but we also fund um, research and policy work that um, many think tanks are doing. So that could be, um, for example, the IPPR, um, we funded them to produce a report on the immigration system uh, and the changes that Brexit was bringing and provide recommendations for making that easier. Um, or something like the Police Foundation, for example, the UK's leading police think tank um, at looking into the gig economy and crime that gig economy workers were facing. So um, my role as the communications officer is extremely varied in that because 
um, no two days are the same, similar to what Kenneth was saying. Um, sometimes, yeah, so basically we work very closely with think tanks to amplify their messages and ensure that um, that message is getting out there to the wider sector. Um, and for myself, we might also um, help and support think tanks if their comms team might not be as strong uh, or as full. So, um, for example, um, with the Police Foundation report that was funded recently, um, I helped to produce like a social video. So um, with their key messages of what their report was saying and the key recommendations to share on Twitter. And it was just another way of how we combined to ensure that those messages got out there to our audiences. Um, so in my day-to-day -day job, I will run our social media accounts and I'll put together our newsletter. Um, I'll check in with grantees um, and see whether there's any opportunities that are coming up that we could perhaps like write a blog post um, to promote their work. And one of the things that Trust for London does um, quite um, well, I think, is bringing different groups together. So, for example, we might... Um, notice that there's like some policy recommendations in a think tank report that we then can pass across to another grantee working in that field and making sure that all of those messages sort of come together to make the most impact in terms of any um comms social and social change um so I, re I really enjoy my job i think it's brilliant um before this i actually um worked in the charity sector so um i started uh my career on a graduate program called Charity Works, um, which is to help people get into the charity sector, um, you get a year long placement, um, and it's a brilliant way to like make that first step. And then I moved across into, um, into comms from there basically. And I'm really happy that I'm at Trust for London. It's a lovely organization to work for. Um, and I just love the variation of my role. I think it's brilliant and being able to make some sort of social change and also have like such a broad um, scope of what we're working on and who we work with is brilliant. Um, in terms of how my role has shifted a bit um, since COVID, um, I, I just wanted to mention, um, it's, it's obviously quite difficult to meet people in the sector in the same way because you don't go to events or if you do go to an event, it's like this and it's like the panelists on one side and the people on the other. Um, and so what I really liked about um, what Resolution Foundation have done recently is like bringing together people who work in think tanks to like speak uh, and converse like informally and have a chat about you know like we had a little chat about like anecdotes of um, stuff that's happened in COVID and it's just a really good example of like how the sector is like using different ways to like bring people together um, and still um, you know like get to know each other and work closely and yeah so I think it's a brilliant sector to work in and um, couldn't, couldn't recommend it enough really so thanks uh, look forward to your questions. Thank you, Emily. And speaking of questions, just to remind you that if you wish to submit your question, you can use the Q&A box or to raise your hand at all. OK, now we are going to hear from Josh. Over to you. Hello, everyone. Um, thank you very much for having me uh, at this really great event and great idea. Um, my name is Josh Tapper. Um, I lead press and communications at the think tank Demos. And um, so if you haven't heard of Demos, um, Demos is a cross-party think tank and it works on a number of areas of public policy, from the world of work to the future of the internet. Um, a couple of our flagship projects at the moment are Renew Normal, which is looking at what life after COVID should look like um, and how we can engage citizens to shape that future to build back better. And the Good, the good Web Project, which is, which is looking at um, how we can build a good web um, and what a good internet looks like. Um, so my job is to manage report launches when we bring out um, research reports um, I'll pitch it to media, press, journalists um, and lead our social media content and um, behind that too. Day to day I continue that engagement with the media, field spokespeople for interviews and pitch opinion pieces and as I said run our social media accounts. Um, I work within the wider external affairs team which focuses on the communications but also events, design, um, and also part, partly parliamentary engagement and fundraising, which is shared between the external affairs team and also the research team. Um, so my background before Demos, I actually took um, quite an unconventional route before, before coming to Demos. Um, I didn't go to university um, about a year after I finished my A-levels. I started an apprenticeship in the government communications service and um, based in the cabinet office in number 10 
and then after my apprenticeship I worked I continued working government for a bit and then shortly after a couple of years ago I arrived at, at Demos um so short I sweet um I guess uh but I look forward to I look forward to the question thank you so much Josh and last but by no means least we're going to hear from Margaret Hi everyone, um, thanks so much for having me. My name is Margaret Welsh and I'm a communications officer as well at the New Economics Foundation, which is also known as NEF. Um, for anyone that doesn't know, NEF is a progressive economics think tank that works to transform the economy so that it works for people and the planet. We do this through policy and research, but also through organizing and movement building and supporting on the ground projects in local economies. We work on a range of areas, um, including the climate crisis and the Green New Deal, social housing, improving the private rented sector, local economic development, social care, moving towards a shorter working week and the welfare and benefits system. Um, I'm one of two comms officers at NEF um, and my job is quite broad. I work on a range of different things, um, but most of it involves working with our research staff to get our work the attention that it deserves. So this can include producing digital content for social media, um, editing and producing reports, approaching journalists and editors to get our work in the press, and producing our in-house podcast. Um, I've got a particular interest in environmental research and policy. So I get to lead some of the framing and narrative work we do for our environment and climate work. Um, yeah, so a bit about me, I've been at NEF for three years now. I started working there after a few years of working in like various roles in the charity sector. Um, not all of them were comms related, including at Global Witness, which is an anti-corruption charity and at the Royal Geographical Society, which is a members organization and academic institution. Um, I did a master's degree, but it's quite unrelated to the work that I'm doing right now. It was in cultural studies at SOAS in London. Um, and before that I studied sustainable development at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland. Um, so yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions about like my, my sort of career path because it's been in the charity sector, but not specifically think tanky and not particularly economic. Um, yeah, that's pretty much everything. My role's not changed a huge, a huge amount during the pandemic, to be honest, because NEF already had quite a flexible work from home policy. Um, so we were always quite used to working remotely. Um, I think like a lot of people, it's been interpersonally quite difficult. It's like a lot easier to have misunderstandings with your colleagues when you can't just pop around to their desk. Um, but compared to a lot of people I know in other industries, it's remained essentially the same. Um, aside for people in my organization who have to put on events and stuff and have had to pivot to doing online events. Um, but in terms of our work, we've been like Demos working to design policy to do with how we want the economy to look when we emerge from the pandemic and pushing for the government to build back better. So yeah, that's everything about me. Um, I look forward to having some of your questions. Thank you so much, Margaret. And we have already had some uh, questions submitted, so I'm going to dive straight in. So the first one is from Cara, Cara Peters, thank you for your question. So she asks, do you have any recommendations for resources we should explore to try and gain experience? So Emily, I will come to you first with that one. Sure. Um, the first thing that springs to mind um, for me, uh, which I've used throughout my career and was recommended to me by um, the careers office at my university actually um, is if, if you're particularly interested in um, the third sector as in the wider charity sector but also think tank opportunities and um, there's a Facebook group um, which I love which is called um, the third sector PR and comms network um, and not only is it a really good resource in terms of um, just like uh, finding like looking for like recommendations of like um, training courses that you can go on or um, or like people sharing like inspiring campaigns and things like that there's also like a jobs post which um, I know so many people and our organization posts on there as well that share job opportunities in the sector um, and I would totally recommend joining that group it's open to anybody who's interested in that field um, yeah, that's quite a specific example, but I would totally recommend that and um, look forward to hearing what the others say as well. Great. And how about you, Josh? What would you say? I would, I would actually completely um, echo Emily in saying that, that the same Facebook group I'm, I'm a part of, and I, I find that incredibly, incredibly useful. Um, also, I mean, it's, it, again, I mean, it's not, it's not great for now, but when, 
you know things remotely get back to normal i mean turning up to you know going to think tank events um when you can there's there's you know in real life when things you know go back remotely and relatively back to normal um that's a really good way to speak to people speak to people that work at think tanks get to know the work they're doing ask for any help and um, if they need any help uh, particular things and hopefully you can kind of not only gather gain opportunities from that but also um gain experience of the type of policy areas that think tanks are working on gain you know knowledge um of those areas um and then that will hopefully help you build up naturally your your knowledge of of uh of comms uh, in the think tank world um but yeah i mean but again i echo what emily says i mean there's some great stuff online on social media on facebook and you can find some really really useful tools great thank you josh and what about you margaret yeah i think um yeah i agree about think tank events and i think especially now actually even though you can't go to events in person it's almost easier to go to online events because you don't have to work it around whether you've got a free evening or anything like that, like normally they're quite accessible and generally think tanks will have um, a series of public events that they'll put on. Um, I think in addition to that, the only other thing I'd like to add is just sort of keeping track of, of what they're up to, like through social media or normally think tanks will have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. And so if you just find a selection that you think are interesting and that you think work on stuff that 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 you think that you would like to work on subscribing to a newsletter and just reading some of their material so that you're familiar with it um, can be really useful thank you margaret and i just want to add a way of also gaining experience especially in this situation that we're in right now where we're all just at home um especially with like online experiences that you can actually just reach out to people and volunteer to volunteer to help them. So for example, at IFG, we now use a software called Restream to uh, do a lot of our live events. And when we first moved to this platform, actually one of my personal friends uses it for their work. So I just asked them, can I help with your broadcast just so I can get some, I suppose, extra experience on the software. And that also just helped me accelerate to then be able to do my work at IFG. So thank you, Carl, for that question. Um, we've had quite a few uh, more coming, but before I move on, just quickly, uh, I think it was Emily, can you just repeat the name of the Facebook group because somebody in the uh, chat just missed it. Sure, of course, um, it's the Third Sector PR and Comms Network. Um, I, I'm sure we can also share it, a link to it as well if necessary afterwards. Great, thank you, Emily. So another question has uh, come in from Sol Hallam. I hope I've pronounced your surname correctly. And uh, Sol's just asking, are there any technical skills that you think are valuable for working in communications for a think tank? Um, if I could go to you, Margaret, first, please. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I think that um, comms is quite a broad, skill set so um some roles won't require you to do all of these things but off the top of my head um some things that i found useful when i was applying for the job that i have now is that i had experience using video editing software which meant that i could produce digital content for social media quite quickly um my colleague is very good using indesign and photoshop um, but other things can also be things like MailChimp, because often you're the person who's sending out newsletters and emails to your, to your like, subscribers and members and stuff like that. And I think also just a general familiarity with like the major social media platforms and sort of the different functionalities that they have is really good. Thank you so much, Margaret. And how about you, Emily? Yeah, I completely agree with what you just said that um, for we recently were advertising um, a comms intern role at, our, at the trust. Um, and one of the things that we really looked for in applications was um, a passion as well, like just in terms of um, being able to demonstrate where you have um, either like volunteered in a particular position um, or have built up skills that way um i definitely recommend if, if that's doable doing that as well i we also um i noticed there was a question about um lived experience as well for at the trust we're really um keen to ensure that um there's good representation and people 
have um, lived experience of poverty and inequality in some way to be able to communicate it. And um, so, yeah, we actually looked for that in applications as well. Um, so if you're happy sharing that sort of thing, then um, if an application does say, um, then do include that, but obviously only if you're comfortable with, with doing so. Um, but yeah, uh, I'd also say, um, especially right now, um, if there's any like specific, if, if you're very interested in like web, for example, um, like looking around, um, potentially doing like SEO training, um, or like if, if you're very interested in doing like in, in expanding on a specific um, like digital skills, that's what I recommend because that's what I've recently done training for and it was really, really interesting and useful anyway. Um, so yeah, hope that hope that helps. Thank you, and Josh. Hi, um, no, I'm just aware of quite tight for time, so I'll try and keep this short and sweet. Um, I completely agree with, with what everyone else has said. Um, where in terms of technical skills, um, yeah, digital stuff is really useful and um, being able to do design, use InDesign, do video editing software. But I'd also just build on, I know the question was about technical skills, but I also think a big thing about comms, and it is a, a broad a broad skill set, um, a lot of it is about soft skills um, and about being personable and getting on with people um, and having an eye for a good a, a good media story. And also you're the, you're, you're the bridge essentially between the complex policy and uh, the public um, often and being able to digest that and turn that into something um, much more simplified and, and something which makes a lot more sense to, to the average person is I, I think one of the most important things. Thank you so much, Josh. And just because of the sake of time, because I've just looked and seen that there's only three minutes to the next session. I'm, I mean, it was covered great by uh, my fellow panellists. So I just echo what everyone has said. We really don't want you to be late for your next sessions, but do start at 5.40. Um, so session 4A will cover a day in the life of a researcher and session 4B will cover the role of membership organisations. Both sessions will be recorded, so you'll be able to catch up on the one that you miss. Just like to say we very much hope that you enjoyed this session and hearing about communications and events at a think tank thank you so much to my fellow panelists for joining and a huge thank you to you for joining us in this room thank you